Welcome listeners to episode 27 of the Running Guy podcast, where I aim to provide informative content and interviews with elite athletes and health professionals from around the world, like in today's episode, where I'm chatting with a young up-and-coming female middle distance runner from Canberra, who's already tasted the success of winning at major meets, including gold in the 800 at both the 2018 Youth Olympics and 2019 Pacific Games, as well as donning the Aussie singlet for the 800 at the 2018 Com Games here on the Gold Coast. All signs are there that we're going to be hearing his name a lot over the coming years in the running world. Welcome to the Running Guy podcast, Keely Small. Hey, thanks for having me. No, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You're actually um, the first female guest of the show. So Wow, there we go. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So, yeah, I've got a couple more ladies lined up in the coming weeks, which will be good. But, um, yeah, Yeah, it's it's good to to get a girl on the show. It's fantastic. Um, Now, you've been at uni today. Can I ask what you're studying? I have been, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm studying a Bachelor of Science here at uh, the University of Canberra. Okay. Um, and so within that, I'm sort of doing environmental ecology units. Uh-huh. Um, but it's good with the Bachelor of Science because I can pick and choose whatever units that I want to do. Okay. I originally wanted to be like my coach, Philo Saunders, and go sort of in that direction mm-hmm. with physiology. But mm-hmm. I um, changed my mind um, okay. after looking at how many reports he had to write. <laughs> oh, okay. um, and so, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm only in my first year this year, um, but it's been good. Yeah, 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 fantastic. Did you grow up in Canberra? Or? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Canberra. Okay. Um, yeah, born here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, you're only 19 years of age with a lot of running and, and champs ahead of you. Um, can you sort of tell us how you got involved in athletics? Was it through the normal sort of pathways of little A's or...? Yeah, I was definitely part of Little Athletics, but I did a lot of sport uh, before that. So I was always doing swimming. I did, went to nationals a few times for swimming. Um, and then I was doing a few fun runs here in Canberra, and I got in contact with a local coach here. Um, just started doing a bit of training through that. Um, but before that, yeah, I was doing Little Athletics, which is where I basically fell in love with doing the sport. Um, it was always something that I really enjoyed getting up to do on a Saturday morning, even when I was in the under eights. Um, yeah, okay. And I wasn't always the best. <laughs> like, um I was, yeah, I wasn't the best sprinter back then, um, but I was actually surprisingly good at long jump. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, yeah, But yeah. yeah, I got into running and I just got kept getting better and better. And then after joining uh, my local coach that I was with, I was with him for a few years. And then after that, I got into contact with um, Philo Saunders, my coach, my current coach here. Yep. Um, but yeah, I was basically running nationals from the age of 10 um, all the way up until now, and I'm actually undefeated in my age group in the 800 meters since I was 10. Yeah, wow. Um, so, okay. Yeah, a lot of people don't actually know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty good to have that sort of to my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I put put my three uh, young ones through uh, little A's, but uh, they were too young and they were just throwing little bean bags around. You know what I mean? They got bored yeah. pretty quick. <laughs> I said, "Come on, yeah. just just hang in there. We'll get to some running soon." But yeah, they just yeah. it was just too much for them. But um, they still run so. So yourself, you would have um, been probably kicking ass at the uh, school cross country every year, or? Yeah, yeah, I was always doing cross countries, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. making it through over to the Stromlo there. Did you like make yes. nationals and the rest of that, or? Yeah, I did nationals for both track and field and cross country since I was ten, placing every year in cross country. So yep. I think that's also good that I can have both the speed but also the endurance side as well. And I think I've really enjoyed doing cross country. Like even now, like a couple of weeks ago, I did. Um, the New South Wales Cross Country Champs 10K. And for an 800-meter runner, that is very far, um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy going out there and not having to worry about sort of what you're doing. You can just run for a long period of time and enjoy sort of being out in the scenery and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and I saw that. You finished well, third behind some quality athletes. So that, yeah, that was, that was a good run. It was run. a bit of a surprise. I surprised myself a little bit with that, but I've just been training really, really well at the moment, and I'm probably the fittest I've ever been. So That's I thought awesome. I'd give it a crack and see yeah. how I go. Yeah, you ran what <laughs> mid 36s from memory, wasn't it? Yeah, I've yep. done a 35 low yep. um, road 10K. Um, but it's definitely a lot different doing it around corners and that on grass. <laughs> mm. Before we sort of chat about the now and the future, let's let's go through your PBs and you can sort of yep. uh, go further in detail, details about the events, um, any, anything you like really. So let's start with the 400. Um, you ran 54.97 uh, here in Canberra, March 2017. Yeah, um, that was that was at the ACT uh, Championships, yep. ACT Track and Field Championships here. Um, that was a couple of weeks after I ran a 204 PB back then, mm-hmm. uh, for 800. Yep. Uh, but I think I have run unofficially a 53 in a 400 relay. Okay. Yep. Four by four relay, um, at Oceania champs. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. but yeah, 54 is pretty good. I've sort of 
never got any quicker than that over four, but I, I haven't actually done like a lot of fours or even focused on the 400s at all. Yeah. Um, it's sort of just been throw it in the training sort of here and there, just do a training sort of race. Yeah. Um, no sort of tapering for it or anything like that. Um, but 54 is pretty good to have that sort of speed off, not no, like no tapering or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. 800 meters. Um, now I'm assuming looking at the dates of this, this would have been up at the Com Games there, on the Goldie. Yes, yeah. Um, just just missed dipping under two, didn't you? So two point eight one. So, yeah, and that that was a PB, obviously at the Com Games. That yeah. was huge. It was huge, and it sort of frustrates me a bit now because I feel like I could have gone quicker. Sure. Like I pulled up so well after it, but I feel like when I was coming down the straight. Um, on the final lap, I was so content with where I was and just the whole experience of running yeah. and not being able, able to hear yourself breathe. Like it was that loud in the stadium. Yeah. Like, and as a 16 year old, I was just like in awe of what was going on. Yeah, um, and yeah. so I sort of just was running down the straight, enjoying it. But then I was like, I was so close to that two minute barrier. Um, but yeah, I, it, leading up to my PBs. So I had, uh, I ran at the Hunter track classic, I ran a two Oh five. And that was sort of my PB um, after being stuck at sort of like 208 mm. for a few years. Mm. Um, I think I ran 208 when I was 13 and I sort of stayed there for a while. Mm. And then I ran the Hunter Track Classic. I won the B race in that mm. um, in the same year that I then a couple of weeks later ran a 204 sort of on that weekend of the 400. Um, and then a week later I ran the Canberra Track Classic here in Canberra and I ran the 201 okay. um, as a old um and that was just insane mm. like mm. <laughs> i was just always that junior mm. in the race mm. was there um, any indicator leading into that you're going to run like three three seconds faster like were you feeling it in training or that was i mean i was feeling like i was running really well i mm. think philo knew that it was going to come mm. like he was sitting there going the, f the last thing he said to me before i went into the core room for the 201 it was make sure you're there with 200 meters to go because if you're there with 200 meters to go and you back yourself, you're going to win the race. Okay. And I was like, okay, just like <laughs> get to the 200 meter mark. Yeah. And yeah. And I felt so good in that race. Everything was going so well. And I was just out sort of the back of the pack for the first lap. And then I was just moving my way up behind Annalise Ruby and um, Laura uh, story. And then I just tried to stay with them. And then with basically on that last bend coming into the straight, I just, tried to go as hard as I could and yeah, I ended up winning and it was insane. Yeah. With a under 18 national record. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then after that, yeah, the Com games. So I feel like once you get in that race at such a high level, you're always going to run well. Yeah. Um, and even going into my Com games race, like I had Casta Semenya in, um, and a lot of people were like, Oh damn it. That means like only one of us is really going to go through yeah. <laughs> to the final. Yeah. But I was sitting there going like, this is great. Like I know the race is going to be quick. Yeah which means I knew I was going to run well. So, yeah, I was just very happy that I got that PB. Yeah, what what was the time to, to make it to the final? Can you remember? Uh, I think it was like two flat point oh, really? seven five or something ridiculous. Oh, are you like, serious? So you just, we just all missed, missed it. out by like just. Six one hundredths like, of a second or yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was crazy. Like it's pretty crazy to run too flat and not make the final. Oh, okay. Like, like history yeah um but because we didn't have that semi-final and we went straight from heats to final yeah like it was pretty cutthroat like they just got rid of uh, like a lot of people but i like had no expectations of making that final at the age of 16 mm. i would have loved it but that felt like a final to me in that race just the whole meet must have been fantastic being, oh, yeah. being up there yeah. yeah so cool <laughs> yeah yeah no that's unreal all right 1500 meters 4 18 54 up uh, up in sydney feb 2017 Yep, yeah, that was the same year that I ran the 201, so I was 15. I actually haven't had the chance to run a 1500 since then properly. Like, I've had a few mile races, like the Albie Thomas Mile last year, which I ran. I pretty much think I split quicker than 418, um, but I have to check that. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been able to focus just with how everything's landed with, like, trying to make Olympics and, like, world champs last year, even though I was injured it was sort of like always focusing on the 800. Um, and so I never really got the chance to properly focus on the 1500, which is sort of what I'm doing at the moment, sort of in the break that we've got at the moment um, mm. and sort of through winter. Um, so I'm going to give 1500s a crack this year um, okay. as well as the 800s, of course. But 
I really want to see if I can get my time down from 418 from when I was 15 because I feel like I should run quicker than that. <laughs> yeah. What about the mile that got you down for 442 last year up in Sydney, the end of yeah, yeah. December? Yeah, that was, that was good. Uh, just tried to hang on the back. That was the one that Jess Hull was back here for. Okay. And I ended up coming fourth in that, which was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was just tried to hang on the back make it as far as I could and then just try to finish it off, which, yeah, with a PB was, yeah, I was really happy with that. All right, moving on to 3,000 metres, um, 9.34.88 here in Canberra, 15, 2015. So, yeah, again, pretty young then. Yeah, um, I hate the 3K. Sure. <laughs> yep. distance that I just dislike. So I never really do it too much. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, that race was good. Uh, it was me and uh, another girl from Canberra who's actually now overseas in college. We were just running around sort of taking a lap each. Um, for that one and then a few weeks previous to that though I did run nine I think 35 at or 36 at Zadapec yeah um, and I won the Zadapec 3k mm, okay. um, but that was in downpour and very very windy conditions but um it was nice then a couple of weeks later to go and run that PB and um, 10k on the road now you were 14 yeah. so this would have been the uh, April so that's the uh, yeah, Australian Running Festival here in Canberra 2016 you ran 36.22 so that's moving pretty well for a 14 year old it's moving yeah definitely is um i then ran a the camera marathon festival was it camera marathon festival is mm, it mm. camera road racing one of those a couple of years ago okay and i ran 35 low which it doesn't officially go into iaaf 35 um, oh right at the, at the running festival at the camera times 10k no it was um it was the act it's just one that's organised by ACT Athletics. Okay. Um, I gotcha. forgot what the name is for it. Right. Um, but, yeah. Um, yep. But 36 for a, 50, for a 14 year old is yeah. moving quite well. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah, it's a distance that I don't always do. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's let's talk about Philo, um, previous guest on the show. Yeah. How long have you um, guys sort of been a team for and how did that sort of come about? Um, so, I've sort of been officially with him. Um, since I was 15, so that year that um, I ran the 201 yep. uh, was the year I started properly training with him, which included like doing gym sessions with him mm. and that before that when I was with the, my local coach, I sort of did sort of the easy run days with the other training group and then on the session days I'd try to fit in with Philo um, and sort of change my training a little bit. So if it was he was doing 800s, I was doing 400s and I'd try to sit on the back of them for a lap mm. um, sort of thing, which worked really well. And I loved the training group even back then. Like it was different training groups to what we got now. We got a few extras now. Um, but yeah, all I wanted to do was join Philo properly. So that's how sort of we start. I started with Philo. No, he's, uh, I think you're in good hands there. Definitely. Definitely good hands. <laughs> um, so do you do a bit of time out on the uh, the grass track there at Stromlo as well? And do you do most of your track work at the AIS or you out at Woden or? Um, so all of our track work gets done out at AIS. Yep. Um, that just works better with where we all live. Yep. Most of us are on the north side except for me, I think. Yep. Um, but the track's just so much better to run on than Woden. Mm, um, okay. I've never really liked running on the Woden track. So yep. being able to Because they've resurfaced it with on. that blue mondo or what's it called yeah 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 the new mondo which yeah. is so bouncy right. and so good to train on okay um, so you especially do... when you do time trials and that in training like it's so good just to do it on that track yeah right yeah um yeah. but yeah we do a few sessions out at stromlo um usually yeah. on a saturday every couple of weeks we try to go out there okay um yeah. to do sort of like a longer um more sort of threshold yeah. Uh, session and then we do a lot of sessions on road so around the lake here um or on trails um up at the arboretum yeah okay um, so a bit of a mixture so we do two track sessions a week and then the other session um that's in the summer and then the other session is usually like a threshold and then during sort of our peak sort of base work which is like at the moment it's sort of two threshold sessions a week um, yeah. and one track yeah, because um, we've got a couple of Victorian boys up at the moment, haven't we? Uh, Jared we Clifford. Do, and yeah. so good having them here. Yeah, yeah. Ro Rogues is up here, here as well. Yeah, Rogues is yep. here as well. Yep. Um, a few others. So Dion Kemsey, he's moved to Canberra yep. from Tasmania. Yeah. Uh, and Sam Harding, who's another. Um, yeah, that's a really good group that we got going. Are you guys do? I mean, I'm just wondering, you know, you're 19, so... Um, as far... I know, Phil, I'd be sort of all over your progression over the next few yeah. years, but how... 
How much discussion do you have about um, how long you want to stay running, running the 800 meters and, and when to start stepping up the distance? It's just a matter of how far you can go before you um, feel you've reached your limit or like, are, are, you, yeah. are you also considering, you know, doing the normal progression of increasing the distances as you sort of make your way through your career? Yeah, it's sort of been a conversation that we've touched on, mm. um, Philo and I, but it's sort of been like, because I'm still so young, like I have a, like a heap of years ahead of me in the 800, which mm. is really promising. Sure. Um, and I've always enjoyed the 800 the most. Mm. Um, that's sort of the event that I will always pick to do if I had a choice. Mm. Um, but in saying that, I think this sort of base work season that we've had due to COVID has really shown that I've got so much more potential than we thought <laughs> in yep. sort of the longer stuff as well. Yep. Yep. Um, like I knew I always had that but I haven't been this good at sort of the endurance stuff mm. Um, mm. ever. So I think it makes my 1500s look really promising, which is probably sit with the 800 and 1500 for a period of time and then decide later on if I'm going to move yeah. further up in distance. But I think, it, yeah, it'll be more like monitoring how I'm sort of, yeah, what I'm doing, stay with the 8 and the 15 and then eventually yeah. move out which is sort of the typical thing to do yeah, yeah. well certainly uh, there is no hurry because yeah you're still only 19 so that's that's fantastic exactly. um and the women's 800 meters in this country is pretty deep at the moment isn't it i mean there's a lot of girls that are running quick yeah it's it's tough it makes it really tough to make teams but on the other hand like it makes it really enjoyable because you get that racing experience like some people some events you have to really travel overseas to get that sort of depth mm. but here in australia with 800 we don't have to like if we all message each other and we go, let's go do this race. We all go and do it yeah. and it makes it a really good race. And yeah. I think that's also what's really good with our event group is we're all so close as well, like mm. really good friends. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it works really well with being able to get out there and just compete to the best of our abilities. Yeah, yeah. Katrina Bissett's still the, the fastest, isn't she, going around? Yes, she yeah. is, yeah. yeah. Um, that was amazing. Her um, yeah. Aussie record that she broke <laughs> definitely makes me want to – Sort of crack under two minutes. Yeah, yeah. The, the dominant <laughs> over in London. Yeah. Um, yeah, crazy. So what are we looking at the time? She's like one second a lap ahead of you. So that's only one second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like one a lot for, for, very for, far for a <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's good. No, like you said, yeah, there's just so many there, which is like it's good because you guys are gonna like you said, you're gonna drive each other to um to run faster, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if if you're the fastest in the country and no one's near you, then yeah, it's it, it's hard to uh, to it find. Makes it a bit boring. Like mm. yeah, yeah, you got to really travel, but you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, look, we've um, we've got some pretty big global track stars on the rise at the moment, don't we? You know, men's and women's and national records being broken. You know, Stewie's yeah. on fire and Jess Hull and all that. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's good to sort of watch everyone just sort of be overseas, just ticking things off. Yeah, it is. It is, it's especially you know, you know, the times we've sort of been through this year that um, people are still running quick and yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no it's awesome. Let's talk. Are, are you hoping to run the qualifying standard for the eight hundred for Tokyo? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, I think one fifty nine fifty. Yeah, one fifty nine fifty. Yeah, okay. Which, I mean, it, two minutes is hard to break, sure. and then to go point five. Yep. under two minutes like it it's going to be tough but yep. at the same time i have yeah i believe in the ability that i've got at the moment and mm. philo does as well sure and i think it can get yeah a little bit hard trying to qualify with sort of the point scoring so mm. try to eliminate that by just running the time and getting on the team like it's the easiest way to do it yeah, um, yeah. And i have full faith in myself that i can do it um given like the right races and being given the opportunity to have the races as well but definitely if the time comes sort of in this next season coming to run that, like I'm going to give it all I can <laughs> to yeah. try and get that time. When, when's um, the window but, open? 1st of December is when okay. qualifying can restart. Yeah. Right. So we'll have a few races um, probably around December, January, and then Nationals I think is in March 21. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, hopefully I've got a time by then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the domestic season's all ready to roll. There's no dramas there. It's going to be as yeah, per think, normal. Yep. Yeah, I think they're still trying to work out sort of the logistics of where they can be and stuff, but they are putting into place sort of the plan on where they will be and what sort of time. Um, but it's hard to really make final decisions because you don't really know what's what can go ahead and what can't. Um, 
but yeah, hopefully it all can go ahead. <laughs> so you sort of sat down um, with with Philo, and have you sort of you've obviously got got a plan drawn, and there must be A, yeah. Bs, and Cs plan depending on, I guess, how things go. Um, but assuming everything as per normal, um, yeah. how many how many competitions are you going to try to compete in? As many uh, as it takes to try to hit that qualifying time. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Phil and I've always not liked to put pressure on which races we're really going to target. Okay. Only because we sort of believe that your times will come when they come mm. if you run the races right. Mm. Uh, and so if you sort of just try to target this race for that's when I'm going to run sort of the time or these couple of races, I'm going to try to get the time. I feel like that puts like a lot of pressure on myself mm. um, to do that. Um, so I prefer to just like map out sort of the races I'm going to do, try to run each one to win yep. and the times will come when they come. And if it's an honest pacing and it's run really well, then I know that I can get as close as I can to that time. Um, yep. So that's sort of the plan. And that's always been the way that we've tackled and approached races um, yep. sort of to eliminate sort of that pressure that I always put on myself. <laughs> um, yep. But yeah. That's sort of the plan. So how many? So they can. How many can make the eight hundred? Is it three? Three girls could go, or I'm just uh, trying to think. If all so, you guys push each other and start running those times, how many? Yeah, I think the quota spot is three. Yeah. Um, or it's so once someone runs the qualifier, it opens another quota spot. Right. Which means we should have three in our event instead okay. of two. Right. Um, if everyone's close enough to the time and yeah point scoring and things like that yeah, yeah. obviously that comes into it mm. um but yeah that's good that we hopefully will have three mm. especially oh. in a event that is so deep <laughs> like yeah is it you want what six spot. eight like well how many girls do you think could can run that there's time? probably about six of us around that two minute yeah yeah so you're knocking half yeah off yeah 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 because yeah. georgia be griffith from victoria she's also moving pretty well isn't she yeah, and she's moving really well over 15 as well. So okay. she might go for both, like depending on what the timetable's like for Olympics. Yeah. Because sometimes you can't do two different, like two different events. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Just, yeah, the logistics of pulling up for the yeah. next one. Yeah. Um, so with, I'm just trying to think, as far as your training goes, have you, are you sort of in some sort of period at the moment where you're just um, sort of focusing on just building up mileage or building up any speed or are you doing any strength and conditioning inside the gym at your age do you actually do stuff outside of running in the gym or yeah we have a very um good sort of strength and conditioning program that philo sort of runs for us mm. um which he always thinks it's really important to do strength and conditioning sure. which i agree with as well sure. um especially for middle distance running like you need that power mm. and you need that sort of stability like to be able to run off the ground properly. Um, so yeah, in our gym sessions, we do we do weights and stuff like that, but we also have a big emphasis on the plyometric side of it as well, mm. uh, just so that we can get sort of our body moving correctly so that we can sort of run fast. Yep, yep. Um, which is good. And we do that twice a week, so Monday and Friday. Um, and I only do strength and conditioning on those days, so I don't actually run on a Monday or a Friday. Um, just with recent history, um, with sort of some injuries that I've had, we've worked out sort of with our load management that I have at the AIS, sort of with my physio, um, that I need sort of the two days of bone recovery, okay. um, yep. which has been working really well. Like I'm still getting 90 to 100K a week yep. mileage off five days. Mm. Um, so I double run on a Tuesday and a Thursday as well as a session. Yep. Um, and then the other day, sort of just making up the other mileage and doing the other sessions and things like that. But it's been really good just being able to focus on the strength and conditioning on the Monday and the Friday. Yeah. And means I'm like not fatigued from going for a run or anything like that. And I can really focus on trying to improve sort of my strength so that when I do come to having to do more sprint sort of training later on, once we come out of this sort of base work phase, it means that I'll be sort of really good and, and strong going into that and then I'll be able to hopefully be able to be quicker. <laughs> um, but, yeah, at the moment we're in that base work, sort of transitioning into a few races now that we've had some come up in the ACT here mm. um, and then we'll fully go into competition mode come for 1st of December because um, then that'll be sort of when it all starts back up. And as you know, racing generally is what, what gets you fit and makes you run fast, so... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the more you get into it, for sure. Especially um, when they're not so um, sort of 
high here in Canberra. Like they don't have that emphasis on having that big competition. Like it's nice to just get out there and do sort of a training race type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so they're kind of a bit low key. So what would your longest run be in, in time? Yeah, so it'd be Sunday long runs, which I do about 20 to 25K. So okay. that's like... Yep. On the trails amongst the hills or... Yeah, yep. yeah. Arboretum is where we usually yep. do it. We have a loop that sort of just goes like, yeah, out the back of the Arboretum, um, a little bit onto the lake, and then we start and finish sort of at Philo's Place, which is sort of in that area, um, which is good. Um, yeah, I enjoy going for the long runs. I used to not like long runs um, when I was a bit younger. Um, but I really enjoyed being able to up my mileage on a Sunday from yeah. that sort of 15 to 18 to more of that 20 to 25. Um, it's been good. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. We're pretty spoiled here in Canberra with, uh, with places we've got we to run. We are very. I pretty much do <laughs> 90, 99% of my running and all the trails. Um, yeah. yeah I, you I, can I... literally walk out your door mm. and in each suburb there'll be sort of a reserve area mm. or trail. Yep. Like, that good here in Canberra. Yeah, yeah, and if you like isolation, it's great because normally you just kangaroos yeah. and parrots, and that's all you see. Exactly. So that's that's <laughs> what's great. great. Yeah, yeah, and we've had so much rain here; it's just beautiful around Canberra at the moment with all it the is, spring yeah. colours. Yeah. Have you been um on any of the um Flagstaff camp shoot or? I've been on one okay. last year. Yep. And it was awesome. Yeah. Okay. I've never really done any altitude sort of training before that. Like I've done a few perisher trips, which we've actually got one coming up. We're leaving next week for that. Okay. Um. But Flagstaff is just a whole nother level of sort of altitude though. Like it's nothing compared to Berisha. It was, yeah, it was amazing. We spent three weeks there. Um, I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it was awesome. Like all the trails at Flagstaff, like it reminds me of Canberra so much. Like everything's sort of pine foresty a little bit. Um, Awesome trails. You've got so many tracks that you can use and then not far away you can go down to Sedona, have lower altitude sessions, which is only like an hour away. Mm. So it's it's awesome training up there. And you guys normally just, uh, is it just, you know, the the Saunders squad or the other runners over there join in or, or how's it work? Yeah. I think if in previous years there's been a few sort of training groups that go up to flag stuff, but just last year because it was leading into the boys going over to world champs, mm. we kept it quite a little bit more low case. It was just Saunders squad that went over there, which was good because we could get like a smaller place um, and we all know each other so well. We're like family. Um, so, it was yeah, it was really fun. It was good. Now, I saw that um, there's another Olympian in your family, Greta Small, the uh... – your cousin, <laughs> two-time Olympic skier. So, yeah, do you guys yeah. have much contact over the years, like when you were growing up? Yeah, or? we. Yeah, she's actually here at the moment. Okay. Um, uh, just because she can't go overseas at the moment. Okay. Um, yep. She used the AIS here um, to do sort of her strength stuff. Um, okay. But it's been good, yeah, having her. Um, I definitely think maybe the talent comes from my dad's side because she's on my dad's side. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, not, it's cool having another sort of Olympian. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the and yeah, I get on with her so well. So there, there must be something in the DNA there. A couple of uh, star athletes. Maybe my sister's a ballet dancer over at Birmingham Royal Ballet Company in Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So don't know. Maybe it does run in the family a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was wondering who's um, putting the hand up saying it's all me. There's usually one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dad will claim it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. And so you say you're doing swimming, which is obviously really good for building up that uh, that uh, yeah. capacity in the lungs. Was was that at a reasonable level, or was that just fun? Or um, yeah, I did squads uh, sort of level and nationals, okay. um, yep. up until I was 12, yep. made a final. Um, mm-hmm. but I always did not enjoy swimming. Okay. It's just so boring. It is. It is. <laughs> like people find running boring, but yeah. swimming and just seeing a black line the whole time yeah. in a freezing cold pool. Like I did not enjoy it. All the early mornings. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a morning person, so yeah. I did not enjoy it, but, um, it, it is really good. I do. I used to try and keep swimming in sort of my training program yeah yeah um i think there was a period of time where i was injured for quite a while Mm. and i kept up my swimming and i was like oh this is actually really good like i should get back into this but then when i started running again it was winter and i couldn't drag myself to the pool in the middle of winter in canberra yeah to go and swim (laughs) um but i will eventually get back into it i think i keep having that on my mind that i need to get back into it (laughs) yeah no definitely what about bike riding you don't do any of that for, for cross training or uh, no, not too often. No. Only if I'm injured. I do have a road bike that I can use, but yeah, no, I don't really enjoy cycling either. Now, Tokyo, and then we've got Paris, and then it just keeps going on and on. Are you, 
are you sort of still thinking of of, of running for, for that long i can imagine you yeah would. yep definitely yep. um paris is the aim yep. and if tokyo happens it's a bonus i think that's always what philo and i have said yeah yeah um, because being so young still but it does help that it's a year later it did work in my favor a little bit having yeah. tokyo next year. yeah um, it, i think it was a silver lining for, for a lot of athletes who who weren't going to make it yeah. yeah yeah a few people sort of were quite thankful that it did but then on the other side you got the people that sort of had their breakout performances just before it so it is unfortunate yeah, um, it swings both ways yeah yeah it does yeah um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it if it does happen. Um, but I'm also not putting that pressure on myself that yeah. it's the big end all if I do or don't make it. Um, because the real focus is being at my absolute best in my career come Paris. Yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't sort of have an idea of what distance you'd be running. I mean, you'd still be on the track probably five or 10 or you wouldn't even be thinking of that at this stage or. No, yeah. no, I'm not really thinking about it, but definitely yeah. 800 yeah. still for a as long as I can. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so 800 possibly yeah. still in 24. Yeah, okay. Maybe try to go for the 8 and 15. All right, Keith, let's head back to uh, 2018. Um, now, obviously, Com Games, that was huge, but uh, then the gold in the 800 over there in Buenos Aires at the Summer Youth Olympics. Um, tell us about that one. And you're also the honour, yeah, the honour of uh, the country's flag bearer, so that must have been fantastic. Yeah, I think Youth Olympics was... Yeah, almost, I'd say, better than the Commonwealth Games for me. Yeah. Um, I had I was a little bit injured after Commonwealth Games, um, and so I just tried to get back on track to go to the Youth Olympics, and I was on such a high coming off the Commonwealth Games um, and just that experience that I got from it that I was, like, really ready to go to the Youth Olympics. And I think it really helped having that experience at the Commonwealth Games at such a high level because I knew what to expect going into the Youth Olympics, like having that experience of the village um, and having to deal with sort of in that high sort of performance sort of for three weeks, Mm. um, being stuck in a village, having to train, be in that environment, sort of away for the first time from my coach and my family as a 16 year old, like it was a big thing. Um, A little bit I struggled with as well, um, sort of being the youngest in the village and things like that. But I learned so much from it, which I took obviously into the youth Olympics and being flag bearer as well, it was just sort of like just that added bonus to it. Um, and be, yeah, being announced as flag bearer was amazing and being able to sort of walk across the stage at the opening ceremony mm-hmm. and have my parents there watching that as well. Like that was awesome. Yeah. And then go on to really good training in the week leading up to sort of my race. Um, and then, yeah, getting that gold medal was just amazing and being able to stand up on the podium with an Olympic gold medal because it's like a legitimate Olympic Mm. gold medal with sort of the national anthem playing on top of being also flag bearer. Yeah, it was just amazing. And my parents were lucky enough to go over there and watch it all. So it was really good having them there. Um, And it was just, it was almost like everything I'd done up until that point, like it was all worth it because I had that sort of Olympic medal that I've always wanted sort of at the Youth Olympics. Like it's always been a dream of mine. Yeah. to go to the Youth Olympics and be able to get that and then go on to the actual Olympic Games. Um, yeah, so it yeah. was a good thing to tick off the list that I had done that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was amazing. Is that on every four years as well, the Youth Olympics? It's usually on every four years. But the same year as the Com Games? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a few sort of age groups that miss out on it. Right. Um, but I was lucky enough that my age group, we had Youth Com Games, Youth Olympics, two chances to go to world under 20s, none of which happened for me. Um, so it was sort of like you got the full sort of all the junior yeah. events that you could make. Yeah. Because um, the because I had to make the decision between Youth Olympics and world under 20s, um, which one to go to. Yeah. And I figured this year I could have made the under 20s this year, which I did, but it's just not on. Um, that's why I picked Youth Olympics because I was like, oh, I think I'd prefer to go and get a gold medal in my sort of under 18 age group and have that. And then in a few years time when I'm the top age group, go and win world juniors. So, but I, I'm fine that juniors didn't happen as well. Mm. I think I, I, once I'd gone to the Commonwealth Games and I think sort of now doing, moving on from junior races, like I feel like I'd moved on from that sort of junior sort of scene mm. and I'm really ready to go into that open sort of events. Um, sure. 
so yeah, I'm not too bummed about it. <laughs> yeah. What time did you run to win that gold at the uh, Youth Olympics? Yeah, so it was a little bit different the way that the Youth Olympics ran the 800. So instead of having heats and finals, we just had two rounds. Um, so the first round I won in 205. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was in rain and I front ran that one. Um, and then the second round I won, which was technically the finals, all the fastest ones were in that. But then what they did was they put the times together and then the quickest time was the one that won. So even if you may have won your first round, if you didn't got a little bit further back in the other one, you may not have won. Okay. It was a little bit weird how they did that, but I re- ended up running 204 and winning the second round. Right. And I really, I thought to myself, like, I would hate to win the gold medal and not win the second round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like it was like a final because you had sort of the fastest ones in there. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I'd hate to have that. So I'm running this like a final, like I'm treating it as a heat and a final. Yeah. Um, even though it was like an accumulated time. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, get rid of that and just like focus on winning them both because then I know I've definitely won. But I was a little bit worried with the um, the heat actually because there was a Ethiopian who her PB was 201. So she was really close to me and she was in the heat before me and she went around in a um, 57 or something. Mm. And I was like, oh, here we go. She's going to go and front run a sub two. <laughs> like it'll be all over. Mm. Um, but she ended up running like a 208. Okay. And I was wow. like, oh, okay. Like, I just got to get out there and run as quick as I can. And I ended up running 205, which was really good. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty strong, like, front running. And then it just gave me so much confidence then going into the final that I had that sort of under my belt, the heat. And then I went into the final and I was like, I'm just going to race it to win it. Um, and yep. I came around. I sort of started surging, like, with 250 to go. Mm. And I really started sprinting down the straight and I just, yeah, sprinted all the way to the line and yeah, ended up with the gold medal. And it was, it was amazing. Yeah. It was mm. sort of a surreal moment realizing that I had won it. Um, but yeah, Phil, I was so happy as well. Like mm. he knew that I wanted that so badly. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was really good. That'd be all- Can I find that on YouTube or somewhere or? You can- I think you can. I think okay. it is on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was, uh, was that a day event or evening when you did that? It was during the day and I was sick as as well. Mm. I remember having like the flu or the cold like a couple of days before. And I was like just trying to keep it out of my head that I was sick. I was trying to tell myself I wasn't sick. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Um, yeah. But no, I was actually very surprised that I actually ran a 204, like, yeah, yeah. being how sick I was. But I sort of just tried to mentally tell myself I wasn't sick, so that I was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you have a bit of a family holiday at the end of that or? Uh, no, we came straight back. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, I did sort of like because I finished and there was still sort of like half a week left of competition. So I went with my parents and we went like around and we saw Buenos Aires, which was really good. Um, to get out of the village. And then uh, the following year, 2019, gold again at the 800, the Pacific Games in Samoa. Yeah. Yeah. That was um, that was an interesting race. I That was my first race back from injury. So after Youth Olympics, I was pretty much, well, ever since Com Games, I was pretty much running on a sort of building up stress fracture um, in my shin. Um, caused from the way that I mechanically, like biomechanically ran on my foot, okay. um, which was, which we know, know now and we can fix it, which we have done, um, sure. which is good. But it was good to know that it wasn't load or anything. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Sort of was injured for a couple of months, missed the national championships, so therefore missed qualifying for Oceania, which therefore missed qualifying for the Worlds, mm. which is, I was kind of like really annoyed at, but then I was like, it's okay. Like I have Olympics to look forward to and I have years ahead of world champs because there's so many world champs that you can go to. Yeah. Um, so I decided to go to Samoa because it was really good point scoring for making Olympics. Um, and so we went over there, but I <laughs> was not fit. Um, I ran, I think it was a 210 or something. Um, I went around in 60 in the first lap and I was feeling fine. And then I got to the back straight and I absolutely hit the wall. And it was just a struggle um, down the sort of last 200. Um, but I ended up winning, which was which was great as well. And I got those points um, for Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was it, it was good fun. Philo went over there with me as one as the te- one of the team coaches. Yeah. Um, it was it was an experience as yeah. well. Like yeah. the place we were staying at was sort of like in a really like no 
no hot water, that sort of experience. Okay. But it was, um, yeah. yeah, it was it was interesting. Hot but and then humid? Was, yeah, very. Um, yeah. But at the same time, we finished and we had still another week and Philo and I and a few others, um, we went sort of sightseeing around Samoa. Um, went to some really cool water holes and things like that. It was yeah, it was good fun. It was it was a good trip. All right. So um, the the problem with running on tracks um, is it's pretty hard on the body and um, it's definitely a, a way to break a runner. Is um yeah, many many laps on the tracks and um shoes have have advanced and uh, there's been a lot of uh you know advancements in in road shoes and track shoes. Um, so have you have you um you mentioned you had a few um stresses and and a few issues and a lot of runners do but um have you tried any any of the new shoes and uh, have they like possibly helped with any of those uh, loads through the feet? Yeah, definitely. I always um have had really stiff ankles um and so I benefit from more of a uh, stable spike. Um so your Zoom victories and that I absolutely hate um because they just hurt my ankles so much with Mm -hmm. how much foot can sort of slip out of them a little bit yeah um so i've always done my 800s in the zoom 400s so they're like a 400 800 spike sort of similar to the sprint spike but a little bit less sort of um hard material on the bottom um and i always found they were really really responsive i ran com games in them youth olympics in them um and then at the moment, the spikes that I like are the new dragonflies. Mm. Um, they've just, I've always liked them, like sort of that 4% um, sort of foam that they've always sort of Nike has had for a while. Yeah. Like with that, like I've always said, I really just want to get a swipe plate put on the 4%ers because okay. that would be like my ultimate shoe. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Because okay. they just, I sort of just run so well in them. And so the new Zoom dragonflies, um, they're basically that. And I feel like I can run a really solid 10K in them and I can also run a really quick um, 800 in them as well. Like the other week we did in training like a 300 at the end of our session Mm. and I ran in the dragonflies and I ran 38 seconds. Like It wasn't like they're a too long distance shoe that they're going to like not help you when you're sprinting or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, And then in terms of the other sort of road shoes, um, I've always liked the um, next percents. Mm. Um, I use them for sort of longer sessions on the track. So if we're doing 800s or Ks on the track, I always use them um, as well as the new tempo next percents. Okay. They're really good. And I almost like them better on the track because they're a little bit more stable and they hold your foot a little bit better. Sure. Um, which that would also be really good on the road. Mm. Um, but I haven't tried the outflies or anything. Um, like that but yeah they're sort of the shoes that um, yeah. i'm running at the moment so so the tempo um it has got less stack eye on it is that why it's more stable or it's got the little air pocket that the alpha flies have okay um, but i don't know it just seems a little bit more hard on the base of it right yeah the, um next percent yeah, I, look, I, I, I've enjoyed them i mean this for two reasons one the performance I, I certainly i mean everyone i always think depending on the run and their biomechanics and all the rest of it, there's going to be a, d- a degree of advantage that you get or, or you know, in performance. Um, some people are going to get more out of the shoe than others, depending on, on how they land, I feel. Um, yeah, definitely. But I, I, I find I get possibly maximum advantage out of it because every time I put them on, I run well, but I actually feel yeah, so feel yeah. like it makes me run better, like it puts you in a position that, to make me run fast times. And um, But uh, the other reason is because of... Um, of how well you pull up like normally you know if i go and do a 10k on the road in you know the old racing flats yeah. with calves and everything are shot and I, you know i can't walk they for are. two days with those things you put on and you feel great they so stop that yeah 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 so that's what i like about them too and, and that's why thing, i know a yeah. lot of guys were wearing them and, and girls on the track because they were just pulling up so much better they yeah. are really good and with my ankles they get really sore if i'm sort of wearing minimal shoes, mm. um, which is that thing that like they pull up really sore yeah. and like for a week I can't really run yeah. quick yeah. Um, on the track. So it just eliminates that. So if I do a session, even in the Dragonfly Spikes that have that sort of foam thing, yeah. I pull up really well and I just feel like the next session that I go to, I can hit that session yeah. like I was like two days ago. Yeah. So it just really eliminates that, which is what's really worked well yeah. for me in those shoes. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. 
Um, and Phil is pretty big on, um, you know, when if you're out on the grass track to do a little bit of barefoot stuff just to keep the, the feet yeah. strong. And uh, you, you would be joining in doing that, doing drill work and little jogs in, in the bare feet. Yeah, I definitely have been. It's something that has benefited me um, quite significantly. Like we do sort of some of our um, plyometrics in the gym. So sort of our warm-ups will do barefoot. Mm. Um, and whether that is on grass or on the track sort of track surface in the gym, like mm. we'll always do it barefoot. But, yeah, when we – usually in summer when we get the chance on a cool down or something, whether we're at Stromlo or around the infield at the track, we will, like, occasionally try to sort of do that run barefoot um, just so that you can really strengthen your feet because I think that's what really helps because then when you put your shoes on, you have that already that strength and you don't need to rely then on the shoe to have, be that strength for you. Yeah. No, um, so, yeah, we definitely benefit from that. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense and – um I mean, Phil, yeah, we're chatting, like, how much better does it feel, like, down on the grass track just to do some strides or some or some hard sprints yeah. in bare feet? Like, it, it just, everything in your brain's telling you is this is the way it's meant to be because you just feel so exactly. much better. Yeah. You feel like you're running so, like, properly. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, I used to take the kids down there before the school, uh, before the cross countries, and um, and we just run in bare feet. And, um, and, and unfortunately, the schools won't allow them to run. Um, in 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 bare feet on the day and uh which is yeah. annoying because uh, um you know i think kids kids should be able to run around in bare feet because um yeah it does yeah. feel so much better and they feel like the disadvantage Especially as soon as they put on a shoe they're just disadvantaged so mm. yeah, yeah yeah no it's so good running around strong like barefoot yeah no definitely definitely um so are you getting any funding from from aa or or, or not yet um i sort of get a little bit of facility access okay yep um and a bit of medical um but that's yeah that's what i get from that's sort of my extent of my funding which yeah. is which is yeah it's it's good to get sort of some facility access yeah yeah for sure um, yeah and then i get a little bit of funding i'm on a scholarship for at my university okay um uh, sort of an elite athlete scholarship which you can get each year so that really helps Sort of just means I can pay for a few sort of overseas trips if I have to, or even the parachute trip that we've got coming up next week. Sort of um, use that funding um, to do that, which is good. Yeah, it's nice. good having that from a university here in Canberra. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I didn't realise there was any of that athlete funding here in, in this country. Yeah. Yeah, it's a specific. Um, universities would ones that have a really good elite athlete program mm. um i don't think anu does it but um university of canberra um puts a lot of emphasis on having that good student student athlete sort of um yeah mm. the balance between being a student and an athlete um so they really try to help all the athletes because we get all the basketballers um come through university of canberra like it's a lot of sporting people and the brumbies and things like that yep. so they really try to have that really good support program for us so that we can balance having a good student life and a really good um sport life as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay no fantastic i mean sort of you know, dreaming here and, and, and it probably won't happen in my time but uh, imagine if we had that uh, college system over here and we had no. European athletes and, and US athletes coming over here to train. I mean, how much would it, you know? Yeah, help? it would be pretty cool to have that sort of It'd be insane. experience here. <laughs> yeah, it would be so good. It would be yeah. so good. Yeah, it's just amazing how many, how many Aussie athletes go over there and they just um, they rise to another level. Um, they do. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely something that I've looked into. Um, okay. Yeah. I've looked into it, but I think mm. my heart is here, and I have full faith in philo as a coach and sure. i know deep down what's going to get me to the level that i want to get to is the training group that i've got and it is philo yeah um yeah and that's always been at the back of my mind and i've never jumped at the idea of going to college like i've always considered it i've talked to a few co um universities over there mm. but i think i've even seen facilities and that like i my heart is still in Canberra here and with the training group and with Philo. Um, yeah, no. And I think that's it's going to get me to where I want to want to be. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, I guess it's all circumstantial. I mean, some people are in, in, in different, you know, areas and, and you know, different uh, 
environments but definitely uh for yourself yeah like, like with fill and the facilities and the environment that we have here and you know even a little bit of attitude that you're training every day you don't even think about all those things help but, um, exactly yeah i yeah. think it's not for everyone um i used to think that like there was something wrong with me for not jumping at the idea of it because people would do anything to sort of have a scholarship to go over there but then yeah. i sort of just had to remember what's best for me um and each individual person is obviously different and yeah what's best for me is definitely here with philo yeah definitely definitely and obviously you've got all your friends and your family here as well so oh yeah yeah exactly obviously and very hard to leave yeah. that yeah for sure all right keely so between now and christmas now you mentioned you're going to spend some time down there at uh, at perisher with uh with philo's squad um i assume that's just for the altitude yeah, definitely for the altitude. I think we've been stuck in Canberra for such a long time mm. um, over this winter period that we were always planning on hopefully going to Perisher sort of the um, end of this year. And we always usually go to Perisher around sort of that November okay. um, time, yep. sort of when everyone finishes uni or s- me it was a couple of years ago school. So, yeah, we're going up there to do a little bit of altitude training for a few weeks, um, for three weeks, which yep. would be really good, just our training group up there. Um, we've got sort of a lodge that we sort of um, go to each time that we go there. And then, we'll, yeah, we'll have access to trails and things like that, which will be really good, something a little bit different. Um, so mm. we get very used to all the trails that we run on here. So it'll be nice to do something different. And then, of course, we use the track down at uh, Jindabyne for all of our track sessions, um, okay. which will be good. Yep, yep. And, yeah, it'll just be nice to spend sort of three weeks up there with the training squad, yep. sort of really improve on our – on our um, training and hopefully get even better. And then when we come back, it means that we'll be ready to hit the races come December um, to really, yeah, run quick. Yeah. So you said you'll be up there for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it mainly up and down up there or is there some flat stuff to run or? Um, there's a little bit of, little bit of everything. Okay. Um, the trails genuinely are usually quite hilly. Mm. Um, we do a few runs up to the top of Mount Kosciuszko, but then there's other runs that are a little bit lower down, which are a little bit flatter, but relatively speaking, they're all pretty hilly. But yeah, we can go down to Jindabyne, which is a little bit lower altitude um, to do sort of our high intensity sort of training sessions. And uh, competitions before Christmas? Yeah, so when I get back, um, well, before I, before I go to Perisher, um, this, th- this Saturday coming on the 31st, I'm going to do, uh, 1500 here, just one of the summer series meets. Um, it's back at AIS this week, um, which will be good, um, to go from Woden to the, to the better track, um, okay. to hopefully run a quick 1500. Um, I'm really hoping to get a PB. Yeah. I haven't PB since I was 15. Yeah. Um, is that mixed or women's only or, or what's that one? I think it should be mixed. Okay. So hopefully there'll be a guy that I can <laughs> jump on the back of and hopefully get paced around. Yeah, okay. Um, or try to sit on the back of Sam Harding in our group who usually runs sort of four or five and then just try to hold it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and okay. not die too much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jared will run yeah, that then, as well? Yeah, Jared, yep. Tim, uh, Philo, Dion, yep. oh, okay. Sam. Clara in our group with another girl. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, okay. We're all going to do that, yep. um, which will be good. Yep. And then when we get back from Perishar, I think the next sort of target will be the Albie Thomas Mile Championships. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, there may be another event before that, um, but that's one that I'm definitely targeting to do the mile because I really want to run quick over that sort of slightly longer distance, that 15 sort of mile which would be really good. I really enjoyed doing that last year and being able to get fourth and sit off the back of people that 1500 is their like proper event and they make can make Olympics in it and things like that. So I really want to try to get up there again and see how I go over that slightly longer distance. And hopefully after the parachute trip, I'm even fitter than I am now and I can hit that race and yeah, hopefully run really well. No, it's all looking good, Keely. All looking really good. Look, thank you so much for, uh, for giving me your time today. Um, no worries, it should be good to chat. Yeah, no, look, really looking forward to uh, seeing your career over the next few years and look all the best with the uh, with the prep and the lead up uh, for Tokyo. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, there's there's bigger things on the horizon after that um, and Paris and, and, and it keeps going on and on. So uh, look, you, um, all the signs are there that you're going to be around for a while. So fantastic, all the work you've done so far. Um, and like yeah. I said, you're in good hands here in, in Canberra and, and with the fellow squad. And, uh, yeah, yeah, all the best with your studies. And, uh, yeah, like I said, really looking forward to uh, see what Keely Small does in the coming years. And uh, look forward to chat again soon. If you don't become too famous and you want to chat again, it'd be awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Keely. Thank you.
Yeah. Okay, bye. Hey, guys, just two things. First of all, um, iTunes review um, be much appreciated. Um, I've asked before. I don't really have to see you guys much these days, but, um, yeah, they're just, just not getting them. So especially for the listeners who are listening using an iPhone right now, it's uh, take you three seconds um, just to uh, pop that star on the far right-hand side. Give me that five stars if you want to leave a review. Uh, that that would be even better, but uh, yeah, five stars would, would be great. And um, also some podcast singlets I've got printed up. Um, be cool to uh, to start moving them and and get one out to you. So um, yeah, have a look at those as well. All right, guys, thank you very much.